All right. So, so even before though, it wasn't just the, it wasn't just the journalists. It wasn't just late night hosts. It was also the state department. So this is, uh, John Kirby of the state department reacting to, he's just talked about Ukraine a bit. And then a reporter says, oh, Hey, don't you think maybe it's possible? Well, maybe you can hear it. The reporter's a little light, but basically is asking, do you think maybe, you know, Tucker's gonna with Putin, maybe undermine some of this dwindling Ukrainian support. So let's listen in to what the, how the State Department characterizes this. State Department. You know, watch Tucker Carlson's show and how are inclined already to be skeptical of American support for Ukraine. Would hearing directly from Putin potentially erode that further, not just in the halls of Congress, but among the people? The American people know well who's at fault here. And I think they know that there was no ground whatsoever for the invasion on February 22nd, two years ago. That uh, he, he invaded... No grounds whatsoever. No grounds whatsoever for the invasion, he said. Hold up. We'll finish that quote for in just a minute. I have to stop right there. No grounds, right? And and this is, you know, no. this is what you heard, right? Um, so uh, you saw that the EU had a statement regarding Russia's unprovoked and unjustified military aggression against Ukraine. You saw that... Uh, it, USAID, which is like a USAID organization, like unprovoked and unjustified attack in Ukraine. We had uh, the APCU unprovoked attack, almost like they had a focus group. Unprovoked attack. Wait a minute. Hold on. War of aggression against uh, was an unprovoked and unjustifiable, uh, or it was in this case uh, down here, uh, unprovoked aggression. Um, and yes, yeah, just unprovoked. So, so that's that's the story they're going with. Right. And it just goes on and on. Um, you know, unprovoked, premeditated, unprovoked, unprovoked, unprovoked. So, so this is something I covered at the time. So look at this. This is a, from the European union. They had the, um, OSCE was a group of people from a bunch of countries. And this is March of 2020. Remember the attack was in February of 2022, Thank right? Mm -hmm. So look at this March of 2020. They have this plenary. They're looking at the Minsk agreements because they had this whole thing where there was this breakaway province thing happened in 2013 and 14. And it got a little dicey, so they set up a Minsk agreement, which was all around how there weren't going to be any more attacks or bombings or any of that other stuff. And so this is part of the context that, that Putin was giving. So in 2014, 2014, they had a peace plan, right? And it involved leaders from France and Germany and Ukraine and Russia, the Normandy Four. They agreed to a ceasefire package of measures. But since then, so this is 2020, since 2014, violations of the ceasefire continue to flare up along the line of contact as the death toll has risen to some 13,000 and up to 30,000 have been wounded. So if you could imagine maybe that there was sort of, you know, Americans or, or English speaking people in, say, a province of, of Mexico and that we cared. And let, let's imagine somehow Texas got given back. So our, our president is enfeebled and is drunk just like Khrushchev was in 54 and just says, ah, and signs over Texas to Mexico, right? <laughs> you know, can't, I know it's, I'm, it's wild fantasy dystopian screenplay time, but it's just how we might imagine it. And, and then all of a sudden Mexico says, you know what? We hate these people. We just don't get along. You know, we've tried to tell them that they can't speak English anymore. They have to only speak Spanish, you know, that they can't have uh, any of their customs. You can't do Easter whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and the English speaking people in that, breakaway province of texas you know like hell no you know we, we, we've been we've been part of america since its founding which that portion of ukraine this was um the point of of putin that portion of ukraine that we're talking about those eastern provinces of the donbass those had been in russia part of russia since 800 or 900 when right. this where he, right. that's why he had to start the story back there okay right so so then um so they had thirteen thousand people killed right and they had 30,000 wounded and if you read the stories this was kind of dark right these were these azov battalion types they would bring in their 155 artillery and they would specifically wait for farmers markets to develop and they would shell them right this wasn't like skirmishing and 13,000 people died in trenches with machine guns in their hands they were just shelling civilian areas so they were unhappy with that okay and they hadn't liked that. And, and all along the way, Putin was like, this is huge restraint from my perspective. 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And finally in 22, he's like, okay, we're all done with this. And you want to know why? 
because this, this is also from the OSCE. These are officially recorded people, they, um, uh, official peacekeepers and recorders from the West. This isn't Russian statements. These are OSCE peacekeepers. They said on February 15th, the OSCE recorded 41 ceasefire violations as Kiev's forces began shelling the Donbass, mostly civilian areas. So that was pretty typical, 10, 20, 30 a day, stepped up to 41. And then on February 16th, 76 violations. On the 17th, 316 seized 316 separate explosive shelling moments, right? Isn't it? And then, (laughs) and it was on February 18th when they had 654 violations. Biden, smart as he has predicted, I think Russia is going to attack. But of course, we had all this information. And in fact, we were supplying the shells to the Ukrainians to do this. So it wasn't that much of a prediction, right? At the time, I was like, I didn't know if they were going to attack. I wasn't sure. But Biden predicted it and then it happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe he's got better information. But look at this February 19th. 1,413 separate ceasefire violations. And on February 20th to 21st, 2,026. And then on February 22nd, the day of the invasion, there was 1,484 separate ceasefire. 1,484. That ramped up quick. Does that sound like uh, it's virtually all by the Kiev side, right? They were just sending shells in. (laughs) Unprovoked? No. Unprovoked. (laughs) That does not sound... Un, un, unprovoked that's it's an unprovoked thing but this is just the context this is the kind of context that we bring to you at peak prosperity all the time it's important right it just gives you context mm-hmm. but it also shows the extent to which every single thing from usaid to the new york times to, to, to they were all just lying and repeating the same parrot of lies right which is unprovoked unjustified attack you tell me if your town or the city you lived in suddenly had a thousand artillery shells land in it would you think responding to that in any way would be unjustified no of course not obviously right Mm -hmm. so at any rate um back to this then let's see if we can no you're too quiet evie yeah Yeah. i know so i don't know if you can you gotta you just gotta please talk up kiss the microphone yeah okay all right (laughs) i'll try you know watch tucker carlson's show and how are inclined already to be skeptical of American support for Ukraine, would hearing directly from Putin potentially erode that further, not just in the halls of Congress, but among the people? The American people know well who's at fault here. And I think they know that there was no ground whatsoever for the invasion on February 22nd, two years ago. uh, He he invaded a neighboring country without provocation. Ukraine wasn't a threat to anybody, and the American people understand that. The American people understand what... Do they now? You know what? You know what, Kirby? (laughs) Many more of those Americans now understand that that you're a liar, a complete lying sack, because obviously thousands of shells landing is not unprovoked. And the only thing the American people understand is how much they've been gaslit and how little Mm -hmm. context the media has actually been providing, which would be important and relevant. I'm not saying it's Mm -hmm. right or it's good, but nobody in their right mind would consider thousands of shells coming over a border Mm -hmm. to be unprovoked or unjustified well the thing that pisses me off (laughs) pisses me off about this Mm -hmm. is um i don't want to get us in trouble in here but it's irritating to me because there's a whole bunch of younger generations right that are that don't have the context for this that don't understand how things are actually occurring in other parts of the country and those are our future leaders, right? And if they missed, you know, getting a civics class in high school, and they're also not getting accurate, you know, honest journalism from most of our uh, news agencies, like where, how are they going to know what's happening in their world? And of course, it's by design, as we know, mm-hmm. to keep people in the dark and scared and feeling alone and being confused and believing everything that they hear yep on whatever channel they happen to tune into right but. right so so let's 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 keep going with this real quick because there's one more thing he says Ukraine's fighting for and all they're asking for is our help they're not asking for american boots on the ground again i don't think the american people are going to be swayed by one single interview and i think anybody 
that watches that interview. Now, again, I haven't seen you know, whatever whatever said. Need to need to make sure you're, you're, you're remember you're listening to Vladimir Putin, and uh, you shouldn't take at face value anything he has to say. Hmm. So, listen, I, I haven't I haven't seen the interview, but he's a liar, <laughs> right? So. <laughs> Just to, just just go to show. So so the, remember now these are the neocons. These are the people in the United States who um, who are just desperate to always be at war. And we've been at war my entire adult lifetime. In fact, Trump was the only president who didn't start a war while he was in office. Right, mm -hmm. only one in my entire li adult lifetime. So you know this is what they like. This is how the whole machinery runs. This is the sort of the Beltway crowd. This is the, they just you know if they're not busy blowing something up and they're not busy wasting a trillion dollars on stuff that goes, they're not happy, right? They, they so they're always going to be provoking a conflict somewhere mm -hmm. and wrapping it up in this idea of democracy. Now, if you come by peak <laughs> prosperity, I've been talking a lot uh, of late about a lot of things, including the systems by which people get into office. Oh, I have to be very careful because um, on YouTube, they, they this is one of the areas they censor heavily. And it's around the idea that we don't have an, a system that has any integrity. I bring all the receipts, all the data. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And my point is just that if you're going to be this anxious to export democracy, maybe you ought to have some of it first. You know, that that's my whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. I don't feel good about exporting something we don't actually have, right? <laughs> Which is where... You know, mm -hmm. you have free, fair, and open elections, and people get to make their choices. That that would be awesome, right? So anyway, low marks for this guy, but he's just a hack. He's a stooge. Yeah. It must be embarrassing. Now, this all gets serious because, you know, February 7th, the former Russian president, Dmitry Medvedev, says, um, issues direct warning, Russia will unleash nuclear apocalypse if attacked by NATO. So they keep saying this. They've said this many times. They've demonstrated that all of their nuclear weapon systems work. They've fired off missiles including the new Sarmat, you know, the Satan missile from, you know, they've every platform they the have. Satan, I don't know what that is. It's the Sarmat missile can is um it's a super ICBM. It can launch and bear, apparently get almost anywhere in the world in 30 minutes ish and it can carry some stupid number of warheads, Yikes. more than 10, I think. 10 at least, but it's it's a big thing. Um yeah, so Thank it's you. yeah. <laughs> But anyway, they have they have all these other nuclear systems, right? So they can fire them from everything from artillery, little 0.1 kilotonny things to, you know, missiles, planes, trains, automobiles, subs, you know, mm -hmm. boats. So anyway, that's what that's what and they do that. And then they send out these warnings just in case they're this is Russia saying we're a little worried that you have some leaders who maybe don't quite understand the stakes involved here. And so they want to keep warning us. I don't feel good that they feel like they have to keep reminding us that nuclear war is a bad idea, but that's the world I currently live in, right? 